Hi, my name is Derek and you're watching the Bayside Games Dev Blog Tutorial Series. In this series, we're going to create a particle manager. In our previous tutorial, we were creating a bunch of streams that we can use to render our particles and send them off to the GPU. We're nearly done and we've actually initialized and allocated these streams when our particle container is created, but there's a problem and that is that these streams are not all going to be the same size. So the number of vertices, for instance, um, needs to be actually same as the number of particles times four because each particle has four vertices likewise the uh, number of colors also needs to be the same count because each vertex has a color so the next thing we need to look at is the number of indices and in this case the uh, number of indices is equal to the number of vertices as well so we'll just use that because we're uh, drawing these um, so if you look at the um, AirPlay documentation, you'll see that the type of primitive we're going to use is the quad list because we're drawing quads. And the number of drawn quads is the number of indexes divided by four. So each, each one needs to have four vertices. So the number of indices would be exactly the same as the number of quads. So actually these all use the same so that's good. So we've got these streams, but as usual, uh, we need to delete these. So we're going to do in the reverse order in which they're allocated, which is a very common best practice when you're doing this type of stuff, uh, because often objects will depend on each other when they're busy being deleted and will maintain references. Okay, so that'll delete our pointers for us and it'll delete the storage once, once this particle container is no more. So now the next thing we need to do is actually to use these streams. We already have a list of particles. It's called M particles. Its declaration is, is just a bunch of pointers to RCJ particle objects. And these particle objects don't exactly match the uh, GPU streams. In fact, uh, we have a whole bunch of different streams and uh, this thing contains a whole bunch of other info we really don't want to send to the GPU. So the solution is simple. Um, Every single frame, we're going to write every particle into these lists of streams. Now, I know that um, pretty much any programmer looking at this will think, gee, you know, isn't that going to be really expensive? It does sound expensive, but in uh, realistic terms, once these particles are actually running, um, the cost of doing this on the CPU is dwarfed. It's massively dwarfed by um, the actual cost of the full rate of the particles. So the full rate is several orders of magnitude more uh, intensive, processor intensive uh, in the number of cycles it consumes on the GPU um, than what we're actually going to do here. So although it may seem like um, this is processor intensive, it's not really compared to the actual rasterization process. So don't be too worried about that. The other thing you can do to alleviate the problem is to limit the number of particles. But the whole reason we're doing the system like this is to use interleave streams for performance reasons. We could just draw each particle individually, but that would be incredibly slow on both the CPU and the GPU. And a lot of games on mobile platforms are actually highly full rate limited anyway. So what you're doing on the CPU matters a lot less in that context. Um, the CPU is rarely maxed out in these types of games. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to have our update method fill in these streams for us. So think of the streams as being something that gets submitted every single frame that we sort of clear out and we use the number of particles to determine how much of them we're going to send each time. So we're going to just very simply start off with this uh, loop over here and I is going to determine our current place in the streams and in the particle list because they're both just linear so we just go through them at the same time. Um, but what we will actually need to do is once we start having particles that are dead or whatever is to have a, a current index into the stream. So I stream. So these are two slightly different. So they, they move usually move in lockstep, but not necessarily, but they're both increment almost every time. So you'll see exactly how that's used momentarily. So what we're going to do is um, go through our particle list, our array of particles, I should say. And um, the first thing we need to do is to check. Well, we're going to start out real simple. So um, let's not worry about the lifetimes in this tutorial. But let's go and have a quick look at the particle 
itself. So each product has a position, size, and lifetime. So that's easy enough. What we want to do is we want to initialize each of these streams with that information that we get from the particle combined with the uh, this system. Okay, so we need to do something for each of these streams. So we'll start with the vertices. So the vertices, if we go back to the declaration, is just a bunch of these VEC3 objects. So that's easy enough. And the current one that we're using is called ice, is in ice stream. So it starts out as zero, the same as the, the iterator of the loop. And what we actually need to do is actually increment that here. So you might be asking yourself, like, why do I have two iterators but don't increment both of them, for instance, in here? You know, that's what most people would do. They would simultaneously iterate both of them in, in the last expression of the loop. But the reason I'm not doing that is because iStream won't necessarily be incremented, for instance, if the particle is dead. So if the particle's lifetime is less than zero, you know, that would not actually use up a slot in the stream because that particle wouldn't be present in the stream. We would never render it because it's dead. So that's later on why that's going to be needed. Okay. So we'll just put a comment here. Next slot in the GPU stream. Okay. Okay, so once we grab that object, we can actually assign to it. So this is a, a CRW VEC3. So now we have to think like, where are we actually going to get this first stream thing in? So the initial thing to do is obviously to go to the current particle, which is mnum particles, and get its position. But that would be okay um, because we're only using the model location. So this is a model space position. So let's just review that again a little bit more carefully because this is a very important concept to get right. So each particle container has an internal position and that's the position in world space of the center of the particle system not of each particle so this is sort of a reference position and then each particle has a relative position local to that so immediately when i look at this i can see this isn't quite right i need to change this for instance this needs to be an spec3 because our stream if you remember accepts only SVEC3s. It doesn't accept VEC3s. They're a much larger, very different data type. So we don't want to be sending VEC3s in. It will cause all sorts of problems with uh, conversion. And the comment here is wrong too. So this should be the position in model space of a particle relative to its parent particle container's position. So that's a much better description for the next person who comes along and read this code. And we just need to check in the constructor. Okay, it's not initialized anywhere else, so that's fine. And this needs to be adjusted slightly too. So now we have this model space position. So let's go back to the particle container where we're actually using it. So that's fine. Um, that is really all we need to do. Um, because what happens later on is when the GPU is looking at these, it's going to set a central position and do everything relative to that. And that comes from a container. So we don't have to do anything extra. So the colors, for now, I'm just going to use a hard-coded color. So the color that I want to use is just a CIW color and we're just going to use white just to make sure it shows up let's just check I also just want to check if we need to specify an alpha okay just to be safe we're going to specify an alpha actually uh, the constructor only takes three arguments for some reason I'm not 100% sure why it only takes these three arguments does it even have a, a constructor that takes these Okay, so there is no constructor, which is fine. Um, we can just move this up here. Okay. So we're just going to create a, a sort of a default color that's guaranteed to be visible, provided we get all the other stuff right. Okay, so the color in the color stream for this particular element, for this particular particle, is that. And we need to think a little bit more, um, because once I've written this code, I've immediately realized that we're not dealing with um, whole positions here, we're actually dealing with vertices. So we've only done one quarter of the solution here. What we need to do is actually slightly more than that. So we need to compute the positions of each vert vertex of the quad for this particle that we're dealing with. 
And the way to do that is quite straightforward. What I, what, what I like to do in these types of cases is just say, okay, um, you know, we have this um, particle and it's a quad, so that's very straightforward. And we need to think a little bit more about how exactly that quad is going to look in the coordinates, coordinate space based on the position of the particle. So what I think we should do here is actually just define, to help ourselves, we should define a quad very quickly um, to base all of our calculations on. So we'll call it uh, my quad or my quad verts is just a, a list of vertices, just an array. And it'll look a little bit like this. So I just have a little sample program that I'm basing all this off. But so it looks a little bit like this. So the first variable is negative one. And I'll explain exactly what these mean in a second. Okay, that's fine. And there's four verts. So we're just going to use, so we're pretty much just specifying the um, the vertices around that point. So it's not too hard to concept to get a grasp on, depending on where we are. So these are just going to define our point. So this is what we're going to use. Um, we're actually going to multiply against these. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to make this constant. Um, now, what the compiler is going to do with this, it's actually going to optimize this out and it's not going to be creating this whole array every single time the function is called. It'll pretty much just stick it somewhere in shared memory and it'll just access it from there. It's definitely not going to create it every time the function is called. So don't sweat, even though it's used in this really intensive thing. But in order to guarantee that that happens, and I don't really often trust compilers with this, is I'm just going to make it a static. So that forces it to actually stick it outside of this function storage and it forces it to construct it only once, which is fine with me. So I really don't want this to happen in every time in this very tight loop. Okay, so yeah, we have the sort of base vertices for a quad that um, measures 1.0 in every direction. And um, this quad is actually set to be on the Z plane. So, uh, sorry, that's wrong, not the Z plane. This, this is a quad on the XY plane. And this will require a little bit more explanation. Um, our quad is actually going to be defined in view space. Later on, you'll see how I do that. But we're not working in world space here. We're working in view space. And view space is very different from world space. View space is a special space um, that's aligned with the camera. And in view space, um, we don't actually have to worry too much about the Z. We can use it to move things forward and backward from in, in terms of the viewer. You can move it closer or further away from the viewer. But in this case, because we're doing what is effectively a billboard, it, it always faces the viewer. We can just make the Z be a fixed number. So for this case, we've decided to use zero. We're doing the very simplest possible case. Later on, we're going to actually set that to be the Z of our particle system. But um, in fact, you know, you can do different things here, but we're just going to use zero for now. And the other one, these ones and minus ones define a little quad around um, this x z this x y plane for us, um, so maybe that's not the one hundred percent the best explanation. But all you really need to know is this is going to generate a very flat quad facing the viewer. That's what these coordinates represent. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to use our position and our size to determine where these should go. So these coordinates are quite literally um, around the view space origin, which we'll get to shortly. Um, that's going to be done in the render function, but we need to remember that there is a view space origin point, which comes from particle container. These coordinates are relative to that point. So all, all that means literally is every particle we have right now, if we use these codes, it's going to be one unit in size. And what we need to do is we actually need to multiply against these. So this is where things get a little bit interesting. So we're going to actually take this my quadverts and we're going to use it. So let's have a look. So that's my first attempt, and I'm not sure if that's even going to work. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm actually taking this particle's position and adding it to my quadverts one. 